Hey, I'm uh, Nicola Adams, and I'm here with uh, Stephen Coulter, uh, actor uh, from The Walking Dead, The Banshee, mm -hmm. and, and many movies. Thanks for joining me. Sure, uh, thanks today. for having me. So I'd like to start uh, with yeah. Mr. Brooks, which is uh, one of the credits on your extensive IMDb list. Mm -hmm. And uh, so can you tell us something about your role and maybe Kevin Costner, yeah, the, the it was, stars in the movie? It was funny, because when I worked on it, I worked on their very first day, which is fun being, because sometimes when you come to a film, they've been working for a couple of weeks. It was everyone had their it was first day. It was like being first day at school. Everyone had name tags just to, for the first half of the day, so you could. Um, uh, but the cool thing was that uh, Kevin Costner wasn't directing the film; he was producing it. But for all intents and purposes, he was directing it because he knew the script backwards and forwards. He knew exactly what he wanted, and we had this scene that was sort of a, a, a montage of this long interview with his daughter. I was the family lawyer. And he was off to the side, and he he was giving me all these different little looks to do. He kept throwing, it was like throwing, it was like you know throwing balls at you to see if you can hit, or a hockey puck to see if you can yeah. hit it. Um, and did it for like half an hour, and then we were done. And I shot for the rest of the day. And then I was I was done, but for a film they'll keep you around, mm -hmm. you know, for a couple hours just in case they want to do a reshoot or something. And I was off. We were shooting in a big mansion in Louisiana. And I was off in some room with some of the equipment, just resting. I was leaning against the wall. I think I was reading a paper. You know, tucked way away, because I knew they didn't need me for a while. And all of a sudden, someone sits down next to me and pats my leg, and he goes, hey, man. And it was Kevin Costner. He goes, I just wanted to thank you. He said, I was throwing all kinds of stuff at you this morning. And, and it didn't, because it wasn't in the script. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just really appreciated that. And I was like, that's my job. But it says a lot about the kind of guy he is, mm -hmm. that um, he hasn't forgotten what it's like. The, and um, so, yeah, that was a really fond memory. I, I always felt it was a shame that they never got to make that sequel, because what a great film. They were planning, yeah, they wanted it to be like a series of films. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess it just didn't do so hot. But it's, it was really creepy and fun and, um, yeah. The, the word creepy brings me to your your horror uh, oh, resume. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your take? Like you've been in Insidious uh, Chapter Two and The Conjuring, and yeah. I think Insidious Chapter Three is coming yeah. out very soon. Um, what's your take? Are you a traditional horror fan? Are you a, a I, more gory fan? No. Yeah, it's, I'm traditional. One of the things I like about like The Conjuring that James Wan did uh, did very well, I think, because it did well with horror film fans. But it also did well with mainstream because it's kind of like Hitchcock. It was, I'm a big fan of don't show us the, but even though gore is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. that, that, that said, I like that. <laughs> but in terms of like a scary movie, um, it's like, it's why, I think, you know, why Jaws was so successful? Mm -hmm. Because you barely ever saw the shark. It's mm -hmm. more what you imagine. There's a famous scene in The Conjuring where nothing, you don't see anything. It's the girls are up in their room but it's like when you're a kid, you know, mm -hmm. and you think there's something in your closet or under your bed, and the suspense of that. And that's one thing James Wan, who's like a, he's like an encyclopedia of, of film. He just knows all the different techniques and stuff. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm a, I think an old school, like more suspense, mm -hmm. don't show us that or till the very end. Any so. favorite Hitchcock moments since you mentioned them? Boy, there's a, there's a movie that I don't know how many people have seen uh, called Frenzy. Yeah, one of my favorites, one of his, his I saw last that. Films. I saw that as a kid, and then I saw it again later, and I think that was, that, you know, Hitchcock is always good because the audience knows stuff that mm -hmm. the characters don't, mm -hmm. and you're almost screaming at the screen, and that's, yeah, that's my favorite Hitchcock movie. Very interesting. Now yeah. let's go to your, your television yes. career. Uh, obviously, <laughs> The Walking Dead, one of yeah. your, your big roles. Uh, Take us inside that universe of Alexandria and and yes. what it was like joining that cast. Yeah, it was weird. It's funny because it's it's yeah, especially since it was several seasons in and they have uh, it's such a successful show. And usually when you when you go on a TV series, you're like that new kid in school that nobody knows, and it's you're very nervous and and people sort of keep to themselves. That was the exact opposite of The Walking Dead. They went out of their way. To welcome you, the literally after I got uh, the job, the first email I got from the production company was "Welcome to the family," and it sounds kind of corny, but that's how you're treated. Like um, uh, Andy came right up, and Andrew Lincoln comes right. He's one of the first people that comes up, gives you a big hug, welcome, because they think they know that you're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, and I was lucky because it was Alexandria. It was very clean. We weren't out in the woods. Yeah. Those poor guys, because they shoot, you know, 
most of them they're shooting all summer long. Mm -hmm. They start in May. And summer in Georgia starts in May and mm -hmm. goes through like September. So they're out in the woods in the hot humidity. And I got to be in Alexandria, nice clothes. And, um, but they treat you really, really well. And that goes from the crew to the uh, actors. Everyone is just very welcoming. I it's swear like, there's some sort of secret thing going on in The Walking Dead, though, with how they always, they, they secretly hide it, but there always seems to be, everyone's cast either Canadian, British, there aren't many American actors There's a on lot there. of, yeah, because Lauren Cohn's British, and Andrew, Andrew there's and a Lenny, lot. Lenny's, yeah, uh, Lenny's, because yeah. yeah, I remember the first time I met Lenny, he goes, hello, how are you? And I was like, what? I didn't know. He was so brilliant. to wrap it up now, because yeah. we're running out of time, yeah. Um, my favorite question, what is a film that's influenced you uh, maybe as a kid or even as an adult? Yeah. Uh, what's something that you've seen that's really stuck I with you? I think two movies. One was uh, The Great Escape mm -hmm. I saw when I was a little kid. And that just, it didn't make me want to be an actor. I wanted to be Steve McQueen. Uh, but one of the films I think that really made me want to be an actor is uh, uh, Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, and, uh, and also East of Eden mm -hmm. with James Dean. Course, I just, yeah. East of Eden probably the power of that emotion and that, and the effect that you can have on people. Uh, that, I think, more than anything. So, East of Eden, Dog the Afternoon, and The Great Escape. Perfect. I would take those with me on the deserted island, I think. So, Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. so much. Sure. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me.